uh, one of my friend you know he he he's a big vijay fan you okay. vijay is a big yeah, yeah, fan of course and then uh, you know the other person is an ajit fan mm-hmm. okay and uh, there is a whatsapp group it's getting a school group okay <laughs> Okay so and this guy keeps on taking up about Vijay and this guy keeps on talking about Ajit and they are not stopping and all the other people are just watching oh wow yeah. good beautiful oh this guy is not responding yet oh he's typing we'll wait <laughs> yeah right so yeah. uh the point i'm trying to make here is that the uh, the the uh, the stress that, that yeah. is happening to a point that their kids are crying okay and the wife is asking him okay no did you buy the grocery store he said no no i need to reply to this <laughs> right many of them are in that situation more yeah. than what you think yeah more than what you think that is called patholo- pathological pathological because it is compromising the quality of life yeah. and it is losing your functionality kind of yes ah. yes this is so in- uh, funny because i suddenly got this scene of ancient rome and the gladiators uh-huh. and i just realized that society does not change we are always so keen to watch other people fight <laughs> whether it is in a gladiator stage with lions or, or it's on a whatsapp group no, or on or on big boss or on big boss <laughs> exactly the reason big boss is successful is because gladiators ask a gladiators essay dik <laughs> pehle gladiators would be fighting with lions now they are like who stole my toothbrush <laughs> that is the gladiators of today <laughs> no absolutely but i think um it might sound like very silly right mm. like you know okay this is you're just talking about uh, actor right but that particular concept mm. is so important for that person yeah where they're not able to overcome even if they are very highly efficient oh yes see that is where the problem is and we need to be aware of it and then if that is the case the spouse or any other family member should bring that person to a mental health therapist ah. yes absolutely in fact when the facebook algorithm was being made they realized that messages or posts that got more hate reactions did so much better and so they started pushing those comments so as you would scroll the number of posts that would elicit the anger anger reaction would be pushed up so they got more likes they got more reactions more comments and so it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because that's what you see more you're triggered more you will type like that and you will also find that oh my engagement is increasing if i'm typing this so overall it becomes a very hateful space and you can't even blame the algorithm because the algorithm just reflects who we are we create the algorithm no i think the algorithm is feeding on the human behavior yes. uh, and i think they are winning yes big absolutely. time <laughs> and big boss is a great example the day big boss stops being popular is when human beings evolve why do you say that because the only reason big boss is popular is because our primary instinct of wanting to watch other people fight and argue it is voyeurism right we are we are voyeuristically enjoying violence that is our primary instinct the day we evolve out of that and we think that this does not make any sense that is the day we we realize that oh there's so much more to our brain so you know in your experience with teenage patients you know many um, parents have come to me and then they said that hey you know my son and daughter is always on the phone or not talking to anybody yeah. and yes i agreed that you know technology is good and they have caught into this vicious cycle what do you tell them in your practice um so i realize that it's now impossible to tell a parent that don't allow your child it's not possible it's not practical especially because so many schools and colleges have uh, submissions online uh they have apps that they have to use uh they keep in touch with their teachers and all through whatsapp so now our times have changed to the extent that unless we change all of that and go back to a non mobile world mm. it's not feasible that's not going right? to happen it's not going to happen mm. so we should be practical practical correct what is important is that when we rely on the screen for everything mm. education entertainment love romance food everything there is no need to look up from the phone our entire world is on the screen now right so where the parts of our life that are unavoidable on the screen fine but there are parts that are avoidable 
So unless we make an active effort to come out of the phone for that, it's not going to happen. And kids learn from parents. The amount of time that a kid spends on the phone is a direct reflection of the amount of time the parents spend on the phone. Because the kid is looking around and seeing that, oh, this phone is always in your hand. So the kid's brain thinks that this is what the human body looks like. And the baby is thinking, my hand is empty now. Why, why is there no phone in my hand? And clearly this phone is important because the parent is always looking at the phone. So a kid can know, even a kid of one year old can follow the eyes of the parent and see what the parent is looking at. And if the parent is looking at one thing a lot, the kid knows that this thing is important. It doesn't know why it's important, but it knows it's important. And now the kid's brain is thinking that whatever is important, I also want. So the parents wire the kid's behavior. And then if they complain that the kid is on the phone all the time, let's change your own behavior first.